Welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. So today I'm going to tell you a story about how a simple mistake in designing our solar system is going to end us costing us thousands of dollars to fix in the long run. So we've had our solar system approximately installed for about five years and nine months. But we designed it approximately eight years ago before we moved to our property. We did a lot of the research, read all the magazines, looked at websites and everything before we made the decision of what to buy and how much. The trouble is, lately we've been having problems with our solar system. And if you think it's because of the solar panels, it's not. The problem we've been having lately is that our batteries are starting to have a lot of problems. So really you have to go back a few months. Now over winter you know that the daylight amount is definitely decreased all the way until roughly December 21st when the winter equinox happens, right? The smallest amount of daylight or the shortest day is out there and we started having trouble with our batteries. Some nights we would get up, uh, I guess in the morning really, you'd get up, I'd turn on the coffee and the solar system would short out. And not really short, but it would turn off. Everything in the house, everything would um, basically just stop working. You go in, look at the control center, everything would be red. It would say there is a major problem with the batteries. We'd never seen this before. And so we, I started looking into it and thinking, why in the world would I start to be have problems with the batteries? Now, when we bought these batteries, we talked to the manufacturer rep for the battery company. We have 16 flooded lead acid batteries in two strings of eight. Now that gives us plenty of storage. And according to the manufacturer or the manufacturer rep, when we looked at these and before we bought them, they said we should get approximately eight to 10 years of service out of these batteries before they would need to be replaced. So at five years and about six to seven months, somewhere in that range, we started having this trouble where the batteries were getting into, I guess to the point where they really weren't holding enough charge and they're starting to have issues with the system in there. So the first thing I did was I pulled together uh, one of the tech sheets for the battery. I went to the battery manufacturer, looked up the model of the batteries, and I pulled out the technical data sheet of it and started looking at things. I was wondering, well, am I actually going uh, overcharging them to making them have a shorter life? Nope, everything was set to right. Was I undercharging them? Nope, everything was set right. Was I, you fill in the blank, and the answer was no. Everything that they said you should do for a flood, flooded lead acid battery, off-grid solar, we were doing. We charged right, we equalized every month, we checked the water every two weeks now, because they're at kind of getting there but I was being micromanaging on it because over the last three months I was like boy we are starting to have trouble so after not really finding everything I started looking through the graphs and I looked at this first graph so the first thing I did notice was that I was looking for the hundred percent capacity and I pulled up this graph and the one thing you notice on this graph at the hundred percent mark to have full capacity of your batteries you look down on the curve you're supposed to keep them at 80 degrees. Now as this, I show you what is currently sitting out there. Right now it's bright and sunny, it's 63 degrees outside and the batteries are sitting in, you read that right, the room they sit in is insulated and is at 60 degrees. Now if you were to keep your batteries at 80 degrees all the time, what you would expect to see on your discharge graph, the expected life cycles of those would be approximately 3,300 or 3,300 discharge cycles. Now every day we discharge and recharge, so one cycle is equal to one day. Now 3,300 discharge cycles or days is equal to just over nine years. So that would fall within the eight to 10 year range for the batteries according to the manufacturer. So clearly we're not keeping our batteries at 80 degrees and that room honestly never is at 80 degrees. Over the course of the year, of course it goes to a roughly 100 degrees outside. It can go equally down to a zero or even negative on the outside. So that battery temperature room actually is between 
roughly in the low 40s to the low 70s really as it goes throughout the year. So we spend roughly a third of the year, let's say in the low to mid 40s in that range. And that gives us 78% maximum capacity on those batteries. We also spend a third of the year at roughly in the high 50s, which gives us 85% of the capacity of those batteries. And then a third of the year, approximately the summer, we keep it a roughly about 70 to 72 degrees in there. Even when it's 100 degrees outside, it only gets to that point. And that gives us roughly 95% of the battery capacity. Now, knowing you're gonna keep the batteries roughly in that range for a third of the year, third of the year, third of the year, you look at the average weighted percentage, most of the time we're gonna have approximately 85% capacity of our batteries versus the 100 we thought we were always gonna have. So clearly temperature is causing us a problem, but at this point I had no idea after looking at the fact, what that really meant. Was this the true problem? And I really didn't know. So when we talked to the battery manufacturer early on, they had said, you know, for maximum cycles to get between eight and 10 years, we didn't know about the temperature, you don't want to discharge them more than 20%. So you want to keep an 80% charge or more on them at all times. Anytime you go start getting uh, more discharge less than 80% you're going to shorten the life cycle. So remember we wanted to have a hundred percent capacity and we didn't know we had to keep them at about 80 degrees. So if you realize that our maximum our average maximum is probably about 85% and we're still trying to keep them at 20% discharge taking that 20% of the 85 means we're actually dropping our batteries down to about 68% of the discharge. Now this is way less than we actually wanted to. And now that I know it, I'm like, uh Oh, what does that really mean? Well, 68% of the discharge, according to this graph is a right around 2000 cycles, 2000 discharge cycles on the batteries. That's a 32% discharge off of those. Now, 2000 cycles is actually equivalent to 5.48 years. When did we start having trouble with our batteries? Roughly at about 5.5 years, five years and six months. So is temperature the problem we're having with our batteries? Yep. We're not keeping them warm enough. A lot of times you always think, well, just don't let them freeze. You'll be okay. But in this case, we should have looked up and talked to the battery manufacturer and know what temperature we should keep these batteries at. We never thought of this before. And now that we know, hmm, we might have to change our strategy a little bit. So at this point, I'm just trying to get the batteries to run as long as possible. We've already had three that kind of started dropping cells in that we've replaced those with equivalent aged batteries out of my father-in-law's system. He actually only got about five years out of his batteries. And well, his actually are a little bit colder than ours. So he never actually had the capacity and he's had less capacity out of his. I just had to talk with him about this and we're unsure on either of our systems what we're going to do next. Now, the reason I say this in the beginning of why is this going to cost us thousands to fix? Well, when you think about it, we're going to get about six years out of our batteries. And that's if I can keep them going all year long throughout the summer, they will not make it another winter. So I might get six to six and a little bit years out of these batteries. The original intent was to get nine years out of them. And when we installed the panels, they're rated for 30 years. So we expected to put three sets of batteries into this before we started looking at what else we needed to replace. Knowing that we are going to get about 27 years out of those three sets. If we only get six years out of batteries with our current condition right there, you're going to actually have in four and a half sets of batteries into this in order to get to that same length. Now, one set of batteries is about $4,500 today. So if you're going to add in, let's say you're going to add in, well, two roughly, or at least one set of batteries, that's going to cost you $4,000 or more than you expected to spend. 
So at this point, we're not sure how we're going to go about fixing that. Do we just buck up and say, gosh darn it, we made a mistake and we're gonna just pay the price of an extra set of batteries long term, you know, 15 years or 20 years down the road, we're just gonna have to pay for that extra set? Or do we hope that technology shows up? Right now, there are plenty of options out there and this year I'm gonna start looking into what is the best cost-effective option based on temperature and the real settings that we have available. Don't know yet? but that's the story and I'm sticking to it. So hopefully you guys learned a little something out of this because I clearly did going through this situation. I had no idea these batteries were temperature dependent to get the right capacity out of them. So if you're looking at off-grid solar or solar in general and with a battery system to go with it, make sure you ask about that. Ask about the real world situation that batteries are going to sit in and what effect the real situation is gonna be compared to the theoretical capacity of them. That's it for this time from Sprager Homestead. Hopefully this all makes sense. Any questions, leave them down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.